What's up guys, Chun is back, um, I got another 4th generation standard battle for you guys today, this is against the YouTuber Black Swamper, I will leave a link to his channel in the description below, so um, I believe he's just starting out, so definitely go check him out, give him your support, um, show him some love, but anyway, I forgot to record earlier, so we're just gonna jump straight into the battle, um, he's leading off with Togekiss, I'm leading off with Hippowdon, and uh, Togekiss is obviously scarfed, or else why else would you lead with it? So I'm actually going to switch out because I really, at the time, did not know how much Air Slash would do, which is the worst case scenario. But he's actually going to switch out and go to Swampert, which actually surprised me because I switch out and I go to Heatran, um, predicting the Air Slash. Um, since Air, um, Heatran can take special hits pretty well. So I've put myself in a pretty bad spot this early in the match. So I've got to switch out. And I'm going to go back to Hippowdon, and he's going to just set up the rocks. In hindsight, I should have stayed in because Air Slash it's, is a, about a 4-hit KO after Leftovers. And I could have gotten rocks up earlier, but um, that was the breaks. Anyway, I'm sitting here with Hippowdon. I'm obviously going to set up the rocks now. And he's actually packing the Waterfall, which surprised me. Um, but even with Waterfall, it still does less than half to Hippowdon. So that is pretty good. And I'm... Um, it's actually especially defensive hip out on so um, looks like it's gonna be a three hit KO after leftovers um, and I'm just gonna switch out because I've got the rocks up now no need to keep it out on in to take waterfalls and I'm not gonna try to waste slack offs on this thing so gonna switch out and go to slow bro um, figuring most likely he showed me the rocks he showed me waterfall um, I know he's got Earthquake, and the last move is most likely Roar. It possibly, it could possibly be Protect, but most likely it's Roar. So he is going to go for the Waterfall again and go for the three-hit KO. Um, but I just switched to Slow Roar, and he takes that very, very well. Um, since it's resisted and max HP, max defense, and all that jazz, so I've got Slow Roar in at this point. Um, I go for the Slack Off here. Uh, surprisingly he actually stays in and goes for the earthquake he probably did it just to see how much earthquake would do but it's just not gonna do that much and I'm able to get all of my health back just about after one slack off so looks like earthquake is gonna be a four hit KO so Swampert really isn't gonna be able to do much to this thing now at this point I just go for the toxic just in case he decide to stay in and just keep trying to beat me down with earthquakes and he just roars me out, I guess after seeing how much, how little damage his Earthquakes actually did. And I get the worst possible switch in Heatran, so now I'm in a bad spot once again. And I'm going to have to switch out, because there's no way I can take an Earthquake from Swampert. So, I'm actually going to go back to Slowbro. I kind of got worried a little bit, because I was like, well, I hope he doesn't try to roar my team around. Because I really don't want him seeing what I've got. So, um... But he does go for the Earthquake just to go for the Oko on Heatran. Um, Solbro again takes that very well. And it's going to leave me a little more than half. And I'm actually just going to go for the Slack Off at this point. Because I figured, you know what? If he's going to stay in, that's fine. Uh, the Toxic Damage is going to rack up. So he's not going to be able to roar me around forever. He's going to have to switch out at some point. So um, I believe he thinks about this for a while. Um, and I just go for the Slack Off just to see what else he has to deal with Slowbro. Um, and he thinks for a little bit here about wh who he wants to go into. And ultimately, he's actually going to go into Gengar, I believe, at this point. And, um, yep, it's Gengar. Now, I have watched one of his previous videos, so I pretty much deduced that this was his substitute plus uh, and three attacks Gengar, unless he changed it to sub-split. But um, uh, for me, the switch is obvious because I don't want to take a Shadow Ball at this point. But at the same time, um, 
I didn't really want him setting up a sub either, so I was thinking about who I wanted to go into, and I believe I go, I just go into Heatran at this point. I was thinking for a long time here, just looking at my guy, seeing who I could go into, because it was quite, quite a predicament. So, um, just looking around, because, you know, I don't want him setting up a sub, but I figured Heatran could probably roar him out and take a focus blast at the same time, but unfortunately, this happens. And we're back. Um, I failed to record at the beginning of the battle once again, so you guys only missed the first turn. I led with Hippo, he led with uh, Gengar, I knew it was going to be Icy Wind lead, so I switched to Spiritomb. Hopefully get the one hit KO with the Dark Pulse. He goes for the Taunt, which is uh, works out great for me. Um, and even if it, it was a two hit KO, then uh, it, Sand would make it a one hit KO, I figured so. Um, in comes Infernape, I believe, at this point, and uh, I'm looking at my guys for a little bit. Um, I did a calc to, just to see how much uh, Spiritomb would take from a Fire Blast, uh, assuming a max special attack Infernape. He takes way too much damage. Um, Infernape always requires thinking on my part, because if I play wrong, then he could potentially sweep my team, especially if it's a setup one or a... Uh, even if it's mixed. So um, I switch based on what the wa worst possible scenario is, which is what I do a lot this game. And uh, worst thing he could do is U-turn, which I'm actually kind of expecting. So I kind of prepared myself for Slowbro to take the damage. And uh, even at that point, I figured that Slowbro wouldn't take too much damage from it if this is a, uh, uh, a uh, max attack Infernape. Um, a choice banded U-turn actually does 43% max, so that's pretty good for something that Slowbro gets hit super effectively with. Um, so I'd still be over half even afterwards, so I figured anything else he does is not the best move, and he goes for the overheat, um, expecting me to stay in with Spiritomb most likely, but um, I just bring Slowbro right in, so that worked out even better for me. Um, now I've got Slowbro in at this point, and uh, in the in the back of my mind, I knew he was going to switch, and I was expecting the grass type switch in. Um, so I almost almost went for Ice Beam. I was literally about to click it, but at the last minute, I decided no. I need to scout. I need to see what he's got. Um, Ice Beam wouldn't be a one hit KO anyway, especially against this thing which is turns out to be a shaman um, so I just go for the slack off just to keep myself healthy in my opinion that was the best move um, and as I said Ice Beam it's not gonna be a one-hit KO so um, I got Slowbro at full health and as soon as I saw the shaman come in I knew Toxic Spikes was going to be a priority to set down I was gonna have to set that down first and hope he doesn't have a poison type um, to absorb them or a spinner to spin them away even though I do have Spiritomb um, so a spinner I'm not as worried about um, especially if this is Leech Seed plus Protect or just a bulky Shaman in general um, I think Ice Beam would have did 40% max to a Leech Seed Shaman anyway so I'm kinda kinda glad I didn't go for it the switch is obvious for me at this point um, I was just trying to figure out what the best switching is going to be, and I did a quick damage calc. Seed Flare does less than 10% to uh, Special Defensive Fortress, so I go for it. Earth Power, um, I figured he that wouldn't do much more if he did decide to go for it. And um, he actually goes for the Leech Seed at this point, and I figured even if he did that, I could spin them away. Since most likely he doesn't have another Ghost and that Gengar was the only ghost that he had on his team but um and then Hidden Power Fire was a possibility but I didn't think he'd go for it at that point so anyway he's gonna switch out he's gonna go back to Infernape I'm gonna set up the first layer of Toxic Spikes that is a priority for me I've got to get the two layers down so I can um, put Shaman on a timer every time Shaman comes back in because Shaman can be annoying and it just helps against Infernape as well um, 
I even considered Venusaur back there, but um, anyway, that was last turn, guys. Um, Infernape's in here. I figured uh, I went ahead and set set down the Toxic Spice. I could have did Rapid Spin, but I really didn't want to do that. So um, I'm gonna switch out um, since Leech Seed is getting annoying, and uh, I'm gonna go into Heatran. He goes for the close combat. I don't know if he predicted that or if he forgot he thought that a uh, fortress was just a steel type I really don't know um, so he that was an excellent play it worked out great for him so I've got to switch right back to slow bro and I actually lived that close combat so I deduced that this thing is choice scarf so he's locked into it so slow bro is going to be a pretty easy switch in at this point I was trying to be a good player there guys but uh, switching around my different guys so that way I could keep him guessing but I guess that didn't work out so I predict the shaman switch in and go for the ice beam and uh, he does go to Suicune um, he was he might have been predicting the ice beam or he might have just been uh, predicting the surf or just scouting to see if I had the ice beam or not and I do carry it um, I'm gonna go to Venusaur at this point because I really can't do anything to the Suicune it's already poisoned so Toxic's not gonna be an option um, Venusaur will be the best move at this point um, whether he goes for a Calm Mind or if he goes for Hidden Power Electric which is actually what I was scouting for to see if he had it but he just roars me out so He's actually making some pretty good plays here. It's kind of annoying, but now at least I know he doesn't have Hidden Power Electric. And I get an awesome switch in. I go to Fortress. And he's not boosted yet, so I'm able to get my second layer of Toxic Spikes down at this point. And um, I'm just going to get as many layers of Spikes as I can. He is going to go for the Surf. It's going to do a little bit more than half. But after the Leftovers, um, it may possibly be a 3-hit KO. And... Um, I believe at this point he realizes that so he's actually gonna go for one calm mind just to ensure that the next surf will knock me out and I am gonna get my first layer of spikes at this point and uh, he could have just surfed but then he's relying on min max damage at that point and um, it was unfortunate because my plan with Venusaur was to leech seed the thing and then go to fortress to get some health back but um, and then go back to Venusaur to stall it out or slow bro but Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that because of the roar. Um, so at this point, he is going to go for the surf, and he's able to finish off my fortress. So, but fortress did awesome. He did his job. He got the uh, the main thing I wanted: the two layers of toxic spikes and uh, a layer of spikes too. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to bring Venusaur in in here, and I really don't know why uh, Slowbro would have been a much better switch in, especially considering I've got a free switch at the moment. And um, I don't know what I was thinking here. Maybe I just wanted to KO Suicune quicker. And I actually go for the Leech Seed. Um, he's at plus one. He goes for the Ice Beam. Um, but it is not going to take me out, fortunately. Um, and I probably... Even Giga Drain might have been a better uh, choice. But I think at plus one, I wasn't sure if Giga Drain was going to bring him in range for uh, Poison and Sand to finish him off. So kind of sucks um, and I'm just I think I just had a brain fart there I just forgot that he didn't have hidden power electric or, or something like that um, at this point I do expect him to go for the two hit KO with ice beam so I'm gonna switch out and go to slow bro since he does not have HP electric um, now because I took meaningless damage with Venusaur um, I'm forced to use protect sparingly um, so that way I don't mistime my protects and burn it off in case, especially if Infernape comes in on a protect, that would be really bad. So I'm going to go to uh, Slowbro here, and um, that was just the first example of it. Um, I didn't want Infernape getting a free attack and having the advantage by protecting and letting the Toxic and uh, Sand finish off Suicune, so that, and I would waste a protect, so that's why I went to Slowbro there. So. Um, at this point, he's I know Infernape's not coming in. He's actually going to bring in his Metagross. I know this is his Stealth Rock set because, I again, I did see one of his battles earlier. So I knew what moves it had. I knew he was going to set up the Stealth Rocks. 
especially since he led with Icy Wind Gengar. And uh, I'm just going to go for a Surf here, because my plan here is to pressure him into using Explosion. So I'm hoping that Surf does enough damage to bring Metagross low enough to where he would just hit the panic button and just blow it up. So that's what I proceed to go with, but I really think for a long time here, because I was trying to just predict the Explosion correctly. But I figured, you know what, if he blows up this turn, then he gets no rocks, and it's a double down. So, um, that wouldn't be the best move for him, and yes, I had an epic camera fail, and it's only going to get worse, guys. I do apologize about that. Um, <laughs> I just got a new desk, so I'm trying to get used to my new setup, but it's awesome. I love it. Anywho, I just decide, you know what? If he and the ideal situation is that he blows up second turn, because then at that point he'll get rocks up. But I'll just bring Spiritomb in on the explosion, and it just won't work. He'll blow up for nothing. So, um, and worst case scenario is I just have to hope he doesn't go for an earthquake at that point, because earthquake would do it would do quite a bit to Spiritomb. Um, it might, it, I believe it's actually a three hit KO. Um, if you factor in min max damage, it's possibly possibly a two hit KO actually and I know he won't meteor mash with Slowbro in here and it's really a good thing that I switch out here at this point because I figured you know what I think he's he's gonna blow up he's got the rocks up he's got nothing better to do he's gonna blow up so I'm gonna bring Spiritomb in at this point and I believe I think about this for a long time as well because I was just so afraid of him going for Earthquake and he does go for the explosion, so I did predict correctly, and um, he wastes his Metagross, so that is awesome. Um, I'm sitting at a pretty good spot here. I've definitely got some pressure on him because he's down three Pokemon, and I've still got five guys left. And Fortress is gone, but Fortress did his job, so now he's going to bring Infernate back in. It's a good thing I did save my Slowbro because I really needed him for this Infernape and, a, and his last guy as well, which you guys will see in a moment. And um, Explosion would have one hit KO'd Slowbro anyway, even at full health. That's why I did not go for the slack off back there. So at this point, I know he's going to start getting pretty desperate because um, he's going to have to put some offensive pressure on me to try to catch up. So I know he's going to go for the overheat. To try to take out my spirit tomb, I just go right to Slowbro, figuring that even if he U-turned, it wouldn't do that much because he is scarfed, he is not banded. So he's locked into overheat, and because of the special attack drop, the second overheat is not gonna be a one-hit KO. So he knows at this point that I'm gonna go for the slack off, most likely, and he's just gonna take that opportunity to switch and go to Shaman. And Shaman, I actually don't fear as much because it's not an offensive set, and I do have my two layers of Toxic Spikes down. So, and I'm positive this is an Elite Seed plus Protect set. So, I'm going to switch out here because I don't want to take a Seed Flare, and I'm actually going to go to Venusaur. Uh, fairly risky because I don't know if he has the Hidden Power Fire or not, or if he has Earth Power. Which, Earth Power I'm not fearing as much because it probably wouldn't do that much damage, but he does go for the Seed Flare, and he misses. Pretty unfortunate for him, but even if it did hit, um, it does little more than 10%. It barely does over 10% to Venusaur before a Special Defense drop, but he might have been hoping for that. Um, I know at this point, I can't do much to him, to his Shaman, but his Shaman's not going to be able to do too much to me either, even if he... Um, does have earth power unless he's got hidden power fire if he's got hidden power fire then that would suck so at this point I make a pretty risky play I decide to stay in and um, but yet at the same time I don't again I don't want to burn or protect so he goes for seed flare again that tells me he doesn't have hidden power fire so that's excellent I can definitely stay in here I'm in a great spot I'm not going to be able to do a lot of damage to Shaman, but I mean, that's not the point of this team anyway. Um, he's got the Toxic Poison on him, there's Sand going on, so it's negating his leftovers. And I'm just going to keep beating this thing down with Giga Drain. I'm not going to be able to get too much health back, but I mean, you know, eventually Shaman is going to go down. 
So, and he doesn't have rest. He would have done it this turn if he had rest. So, it is pretty good. It's looking pretty great at this part. He did go for Leech Seed. He probably forgot that it doesn't affect Grass types. So, I got another free turn to Giga Drain and get some more health back. And his Shaman does finally go down. Even if he switched to Infernape at that point, I still had the advantage because I didn't use Protect. And he's going to bring 8 back in now. And I am going to go for the Protect just to see what he would lock himself into. Um, and it turns out that it is going to be Overheat once again. And uh, I did consider Slowbro. But um, I just... I really wanted to keep Slowbro safe because I wanted to make sure that this Infernape went down. I just didn't want to have any problems coming from it at any point during this match. So at this point, I know he's locked into overheat. So now I am going to, um, I believe I'm going to switch out. I do. And I actually go to Heatran um, to get the flash fire boost from overheat. So it is looking pretty good. Um, I basically force the switch at this point, and I just take the opportunity to um, use rest and get my health back. But he's going to bring in his last guy, which is also a Heatran. And I just laughed so hard at this point. I was like, wow. He has the same nickname as my Heatran. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you can't have two Heatrans with the exact same nickname on the field. That's, that's not cool. That's, that's not cool. But anyway, I don't see lefties. I don't see life orb. So I know it's not the exact same set as my Heatran. It's not a rest talker. So it, I figured it's either got Shaka or it might have Expert Belt just to mess with um, its opponents. He is going to go for the Earth Power. I know I'm going to live that because I'm so specially defensive even though I'm four times weak to it. I go for the sleep talk here. Initially, I thought this was very risky because if I clicked Lava Plume, he would have got a boost, but I do get Roar, which is what I was hoping for, so that works out awesome. Infernate comes back in, and, and the hazards will finish him off, but um, looking back, it actually wasn't very risky at all because he went straight for the Earth Power, and this Heatran actually turns out to be Scarfed as well. So, um, he is going to go for the Earth Power, and I just want Heatran to go down at that point because I do want to free switch in. So, um, I'm going to bring Slowbro in at this point. I've still got Hippowd on. Um, and that's pretty much going to be the game, guys, because as I said, he is Scarfed. He's not Shaka or Expert Belt, as I was originally fearing, because then he could switch moves on me if he did get a boost back there, but... Um, I think I'm just deciding who I want to finish the game up with because Hippowdon's actually at full health. But I just want to bring Slowbro in at this point. They could both take an Earth Power, but I just want to bring Slowbro in. And I'm actually glad I did because the match finished a little bit more epically. So Slowbro comes in. I am going to go for the Surf. He is locked into Earth Power, so he can't do anything else. And Earth Power did quite a bit. And I was thinking, wow, it looks like it's going to be a two-hit KO. And I'm going to have to finish this match with a pout on. So I really thought Slowbro at this point, and Slowbro's gone. He's going to go down because Surf did not one-hit KO. So that kind of sucks. But he goes for the Earth Power again, and I live with one HP. I could not believe it. I don't know if that was min damage or what, but that was awesome. But great game, Black Swampert. I hope to play you again. And guys, um, looking back on it, this team looked very familiar. I'm just going to ask you guys, can you guess what team uh, Black Swampert used? I'll give you a thumbs up in the comments below if you guess right. And uh, anyway, until next episode, Sean is out. Peace.